In February 2024, the disappearance of a 13-year-old girl near the bustling heart of Orlando, Florida, the theme park capital of the world, triggered a tragic saga. This incident would unravel a harrowing web of deceit, pain, abuse, and horror lurking within the girl's family, shocking the community and the nation. Let's take a look at the horror Maddie Soto had to endure. On February 22, 2024, Madeline Soto turned 13 years old, and that weekend she celebrated her birthday with her family. As Madeline went to bed after the party on Sunday night, February 25th, her thoughts were filled with typical teenage girl stuff. However, the following day, February 26th, would forever change her life. Madeline's mother's boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, 37 years old, volunteered to drive Madeline to school on February 22nd, 2024. According to Stephen, he dropped Madeline several blocks away from Hunters Creek Middle School, where she attended. Stephen claimed Madeline was left at the Peace Methodist Church, half a mile from her school. In the afternoon, when Jen, Madeline's mother, went to pick her up from school, she discovered that Madeline had never made it to Hunters Creek Middle School that day. Madeline's sudden disappearance set off alarm bells and prompted an immediate investigation. During the investigation, sexually explicit images of Madeline were found on Stephen's cell phone. These photos provided damning evidence against Stephen, leading to his arrest. As the investigation continued, it was revealed that Stephen Stearns was also responsible for Madeline's murder. Tragically, the body of Madeline was eventually found, and Stephen was charged for her murder. Facing the prospect of a death sentence, Stephen is now awaiting trial for his heinous crime. Madeline Soto's sudden disappearance captivated the nation, igniting a desperate quest for answers amid swirling suspicions about her mother's boyfriend. Let's uncover the truth. One day following Madeline's disappearance, the Orange County Sheriff's Office in Orlando, Florida, received a report and initiated an official search for the missing 13-year-old girl. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement, or FDLE, also got involved, releasing her missing person flyer to the public. With this step, the search for Madeline gained momentum, and approximately 100 law enforcement personnel sprang into action. Madeline's case was classified as that of a missing endangered person by the FDLE due to the strange circumstances surrounding her disappearance. However, a crucial tool, an Amber Alert, was not immediately issued. The criteria for issuing an Amber Alert include specific parameters that Madeline's case did not fulfill. As a result, the detectives responsible for investigating her disappearance faced additional challenges as they were uncertain about whether she ran away or was abducted, making the case difficult. Adding to the difficulty, they could not track the teenager's cell phone, which she left behind at home. According to Madeline's mother, Jen Soto, the teenager was always on her phone, texting with friends or using social media. These circumstances made the case even more perplexing for detectives as they continued their efforts to find Madeline. Just as the community's hope was fading, a shocking revelation shattered the silence. The prime suspect's identity was unveiled, and to everyone's horror, the face of the accused was all too familiar. The community took Madeline's disappearance very seriously, as residents in the area flocked to the streets to do whatever they could to help find the missing teenager. Although everyone hoped for the best, there was a growing sense of unease, and the possibility that something bad had happened to Madeline weighed heavily on everyone's mind. On February 27th, one day after Madeline's disappearance, Fox 35 interviewed Jen Soto, Madeline's mother. During the interview, Jen expressed her desperation to find her daughter, while her boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, appeared as a loving and supportive partner in the background. However, the truth behind Stephen Stearns was sinister. Two days into Madeline's disappearance, the nation was shocked when Stephen Stearns was arrested on unrelated charges. Despite his initial denial of involvement in the case, his name quickly emerged as the prime suspect. Stephen Stearns was the last person to have seen Madeline alive, as he had claimed he had dropped her off outside the church on Monday morning, allowing her to walk to school. However, inconsistencies in his statements raised suspicions, and the police soon discovered that Stephen Stearns was not as innocent as he appeared. According to the arrest affidavit, Stephen has been charged with possession of child abuse material. The detectives involved in the investigation into Madeline's disappearance stumbled upon disturbing evidence on his phone. They alleged that Stephen had taken steps to delete these troubling images, but the detectives were able to recover them. After Stephen's arrest, he requested an attorney and refused to answer any questions regarding the disappearance of his girlfriend's daughter or the images found on his phone. He remained silent, leaving investigators with no choice but to piece together the 
horrifying details. Tragedy on Friday, March 1st, about five days into the search for Madeline, the detectives working on her case held a press conference. They stated that they were confident that Madeline was dead. According to the detective, Stephen Stearns never dropped off Madeline at school Monday morning, and the detectives have reason to believe that Madeline was already dead long before that time. The detective also revealed that they thought Stephen had moved Madeline's body on Monday morning after he killed her. This revelation sent shockwaves through the community, causing further anguish and heartbreak for Madeline's loved ones. On the afternoon of Friday, March 1st, the body of Madeline was discovered in an area where a witness reported seeing Stephen Stearns between 1 and 2.30 p.m. on Monday, the day Madeline disappeared. According to the witness, Stearns was fixing a flat tire on his silver Lincoln MKZ. New court documents were released after Stephen's arrest that alleged Stephen had mistreated Madeline for several years before she was murdered. These documents stated that Madeline was as young as 11 years old at the time of the start of the mistreatment. In addition to being charged with first-degree murder, Stephen Stearns faced several other serious charges. He was indicted on multiple counts related to inappropriate conduct with minors and possession of illegal materials. Stephen Stearns now sits behind bars at Osceola County Jail awaiting trial. As he remains in custody, both prosecutors and his defense team are fiercely crafting their strategies for the courtroom showdown. As of July 24th, Stephen Stearns' trial has been delayed, giving the prosecution and the defense additional time to construct their cases. Stephen Stearns' defense team has remained conspicuous in silence, refraining from disclosing any strategies or plans they intend to employ in the case. In contrast, the prosecution's case seems to be progressing smoothly. The discovery of abuse material on Stephen Stern's phone has provided substantial evidence against him. Despite the seemingly overwhelming evidence against Stephen Stern, there are uncertainties surrounding the case. One significant question is the reliability of the prosecution's case against Stephen Stern for Madeline's murder. While the presence of abuse material on his phone is damaged, it remains unclear whether any of Stephen Stern's DNA was discovered on Madeline's body during an autopsy. The detectives have not disclosed a significant amount of evidence they have gathered against Stephen Stern, aiming to maintain the integrity of the case and uphold the pursuit of justice for Madeline Soto. Madeline Soto's disappearance and murder sparked widespread concern and media coverage in Orlando. Several vigils were held in her memory, allowing community members to express their grief and solidarity. The media attention surrounding the case played a significant role in raising awareness. However, some argue that sensationalizing such stories can lead to misinformation and unnecessary panic. In the case of Madeline Soto, the media played a crucial role in spreading information to the public and assisting in the investigation. The intense media coverage of Madeline's case not only brought attention to her disappearance, but also prompted members of the public to come forward with valuable information. By keeping the case at the forefront of public attention, the media encouraged individuals to come forward with any knowledge or suspicions they may have had. This, in turn, helped authorities in their search for answers. As Stephen Stearns awaits his fate, a heated debate rages on, with the public and legal experts fiercely arguing over what punishment would truly fit the heinous crime he's accused of. What do you believe is the appropriate punishment in cases like these? Stephen Stearns is currently facing the death penalty if convicted. There are currently 294 individuals on death row in Florida. The method used to carry out a death sentence in Florida depends on the inmate's choice. Florida offers the choice between lethal injection and electrocution. When it comes to Stephen Stearns' case, if he did murder Madeline and subjected her to years of abuse beforehand, there are indeed many people who feel that the death sentence is a perfect punishment. However, there are several arguments that can be made both for and against the death penalty. Stephen Stern's case has polarized the community, with some advocating for the death penalty and others advocating for life in prison. Supporters of the death penalty argue that Stern deserves the ultimate punishment due to the severity of his crimes. 